SpaceX teams at the South Texas Launch Facility in Boca Chica Beach, are preparing for a second round of Starship SN-8 testing at the launch pad. Starship SN-8 is a stainless steel prototype that will attempt a 15-kilometer, 50,000 feet, test flight in November if preparations go well in the coming days. Following the first ever triple Raptor static fire test, Starship SN-8 is pushing through the pre-launch milestones. The nose cone has since been installed, resulting in the first full Starship stack since MK-1, allowing for a second static fire test this coming week. While SN-8 will be aiming for a touchdown on the launch pad, Elon Musk provided clarity on the primary goals of SN-8's flight, with a stable, controlled descent via its aero surface is a major objective. Starship SN-8 is currently waiting for the second set of testing, which will involve cryogenic-proof testing of the nose cone's LOX header tank, followed by ever-evolving static fire tests with one, then two engines, both via the header tank system. A full, three-engine, static fire will then be conducted, mirroring the first ever triple Raptor test, although this time with one of the engines swapped out. Raptor SN-36 has taken the place of the since-removed SN-39, likely requiring a second full static fire. The second static fire test will involve propellant being fed from the header tank system. The header tank tests are related to the landing burn, with the propellant supplied via these small tanks, of which the LOX tank is located at the tip of the since-installed nose cone. SN-8 passed through the first major objective in impressive fashion, progressing in a staggered manner with a pre-burner attempt aborted, followed by a pre-burner test involving at least two of the Raptors. The following night saw another pre-burner test, which clearly involved all three Raptors per the visuals, allowing SpaceX to push toward the static fire attempt. However, to get to that point, where SN-8 will initiate a Raptor Elite, Pushing the aft to face the ground before a smooth touchdown on the landing legs, will require many things to go right during the flight. Lifting off under the power of the three Raptors, SN-8 will be aiming for an altitude of 50,000 feet. Then, for the first time during Starship testing, the aero surfaces will come into play, as SN-8 glides slash descends, or, as many like to word it, belly flops back toward terra firma. This phase of the test will be a major data point for SpaceX, allowing them to recreate what they've already evaluated in a wind tunnel in the more challenging regime of real life. The big win of engine relight will involve using the header tank system's ability to supply the Raptors. Based on the static fire test plan, it is likely the single, and then dual engine, tests aim to provide ground testing for what is expected to be a single wrap to ignition during the flip, followed by a two-engine landing burn. Any subsequent wobbly landing would be something that could be refined via the data gathered during SN8's attempt. Understanding exactly how the body flaps control pitch, your and roll during descent, such that the ship is positioned well to relight, flip and land, would be a big win, added Elon in subsequent Twitter replies. Of course, Elon also provided the hopefully unlikely scenario of SN8 failing as she leaves the pad. Although the most likely failure point is expected to be during the attempt to return to the landing pad, the ability to drop SN8 into the sea, should the return trip not go to plan, is also available. Although, if it fails right at the end, some landing pad repair will be needed to fill in the crater, Elon added. Should SN8 fail to make it back in one piece, Elon also cited the production cadence of SpaceX Boca Chica, which is self-evident via Mary's, at Boca Chicago less daily videos. While SN8 is tested at the launch site, the production facility saw SN9 moved to the high bay for aero surface installation. While the 150 meters hop twins SN5 and SN6 had taken up temporary residence inside the high bay during recent stormy weather, this is the first time a future Starship had entered the new facility for pre-flight processing. The high bay's primary role, once its gantry crane is installed, will enable stacking operations for the tall super heavy booster. The move of SN9 into the high bay provided relief to the mid bay, which, once SN10 is fully stacked, will allow SN11 to begin stacking operations. 
This production cadence emphasizes SpaceX's ability to rapidly return from any potential test flight failure with a new vehicle ready to take a trip to the launch site within days of losing the previous vehicle. Or, in the event of successes, the ability to tag team prototype vehicles on numerous test flights to gain additional data. Refinements are already taking place, with minor, as Elon stated on Twitter, changes already implemented on SN9. It is known that SN9 will be the first prototype Starship to sport structure made entirely from 304 liters steel, whereas SN8 still has some parts made from the 301 alloy. Although super heavy sections remain staged outside one of the production facility tents, the collection of vehicle-specific Starship sections is impressive. Fully identified parts for vehicles up to SN12 are on site, with specific hardware, observed via Mary via labels, up to SN14, such as a downcomer that arrived several weeks ago. One element of Starship hardware that has seen a reduction of late has been the nose cones, with several test articles scrapped over recent days, allowing for the focus to be placed on the flight nose cones that will be mated with upcoming Starships. However, one spare nose cone has been repurposed, albeit with a lick of white paint and likely internal work yet to take place. This nose cone will be used as a mock-up for Starship's human landing system, HLS, bid. SpaceX's next-generation Starship system may help clean up Earth orbit when it's not taking people to the Moon and Mars. Starship is at the heart of SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk's longtime Mars colonization goal, and he has said that he envisions the rocket spaceship duo eventually shouldering the company's entire space flight load. If all goes according to plan, Starship's many tasks will include launching people to far flung cosmic locales and on super fast point to point trips here on Earth, carrying satellites into orbit and, perhaps, collecting into orbiting particularly big and troublesome pieces of space junk. The Starship is the upper stage of a giant new rocket SpaceX is developing to boost more than 100 metric tons, or more than 220,000 pounds, of payloads into a low Earth orbit. With in-orbit refueling, the Starship's methane-fed engines could propel more than 100 metric tons of cargo to the Moon, Mars, and other deep space destinations, according to SpaceX. SpaceX is designing the Starship and its massive booster rocket, named the Super Heavy, to be fully reusable. Both vehicles will come back to Earth for vertical landings to be turned around for more missions. SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwen Shotwell highlighted that potential cleanup role recently. During an online Time 100 Talks interview with Time magazine that was posted on October 22, she said that it's quite possible that we could leverage Starship to go to some of some of these dead rocket bodies, other people's rockets, of course, basically, go pick up some of this junk in outer space. The of course in that last sentence is a nod to Starship's planned reusability, which will be total. The system's giant rocket, known as Super Heavy, will return to Earth for a vertical landing after launching the 165-foot-tall, 50 meters, Starship spacecraft to orbit. That spaceship, somewhat confusingly known as Starship, will be able to fly many missions once aloft, going back and forth from Earth orbit to Mars repeatedly, for example. Starship will be powerful enough to launch itself off the Moon and Mars, but it will need help to escape Earth's much deeper gravity well. It's not going to be easy, but I do believe that Starship offers the possibility of going and doing that, Shotwell told Time Technology columnist Patrick Lucas Austin, referring to debris mitigation. And I'm really excited about it.